Okay, I know how difficult it is. Actually, when I first uh, learned these kind of things, uh, actually we spent uh, like uh, one or two weeks to sit down and uh, think of the, the phenomena thoroughly because I uh, break up uh, all our intuition in the past, actually, right? For example, uh, this figure is very important because uh, uh, you accumulate three different kind of uh, forces together into one figure and you can do comparison. So this figure, I will use this figure to break up uh, your intuition in, in, in your scale. Our scale is in the main scale, the meter scale. So in the meter scale, you can find out uh, we are familiar uh, with the surface force and also inertia force. We ignore uh, surface tension thoroughly, right? In all our uh, different kind of um, the full mechanics or materials mechanics, uh, different kind of books, you never find out the surface tension in our scale. When you, when you are dealing with a bridge, ship, uh, 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 airplane, when you do the design, no, nobody think of surface tension in the past. So this is uh, the issue. So when you go down below millimeter size, you find out surface tension becomes important, even more important in inertia than in inertia force. So that's why we need to uh, think of, of the surface tension more uh, seriously, okay? And also uh, to take out our uh, original idea about inertia force, because we count inertia force a lot in the past, actually, to drive out uh, every kind of things and also uh, to encounter different kind of phenomena. Uh, most of the phenomena are coming from inertia force. So now we need to refresh our mind to get a new intuition. So how can you get a new intuition? Exactly from this figure. So when you want to go into different territory, try to think of which force is, more, is the most important one. For example, uh, beyond like a millimeter size, inertia force, search force are two important force, especially beyond millimeter uh, size. Inertia force is definitely the king. And between meter and the millimeter, surface force will be larger than the other two forces. And the surface tension is nothing uh, in the large scale, micro scale, beyond millimeter size. However, below millimeter size, in the micrometer size, you can find out the largest force is surface force. Okay? So that's why in our driving force, we use a lot of uh, electrostatic force using uh, diffusion, uh, using uh, different kind of friction to do the job. Okay, and the surface tension is also important, but when, when they compare to surface force, it's not as large. Okay, but still good force to use to drive. Uh, so the scale becomes smaller. Okay, it will become more efficient by using surface tension. And inertia force becomes nothing, okay, in micro scale. That's, a, that's an important take home message, yeah. And the be below a uh, nanometer, that's a different uh, um, territory again. Below millimeter, uh, sorry, because micrometer, you can find out subtension become a king. Subtension is much more than your uh, viscous uh, shear force, uh, electricity force. So that's why in the uh, nanometer scale, almost nothing can compete with subtension. So once you have a subtension grab something in nano scale, you never find a way to get rid of the trap. Very, very difficult. Very, very difficult. And also nail bubble, nail dropping. Not easy to generate, or not easy to get rid of. Very, very difficult in nail scale. Okay, so it's important for us uh, combat to think of this figure every time when you want to deal with the design in different scale. Just consider which one is important, which one is not that important. So try not to uh, to do things against uh, the things that is important. Try to take advantage, okay, of that phenomena. Okay, this is the basic idea. Okay. So in your homework, you will try uh, to find the three example. So uh, uh, the number three example I just uh, mentioned uh, on the board. <laughs> okay. Okay. If you consider a case. We want to use in the shear force uh, to cut the droplets. So for example, we have water going to the channel here and the oil coming from uh, the other side, uh, on the other side. 
you want to use in the water uh, force, the shear force, to cut the oil into droplets. In this case, uh, there are two forces uh, balanced to each other. One is subtension force. Subtension force is exactly the subtension times not the surface area, times the sur circumference. Okay? Proportion to the diameter. So this is subtension force. And th this is the force to hold the drop as, as a whole without a breakage. Okay? It's subtension force. On the other hand, the cutting force will be the shear force. The shear force generally by uh, the velocity gradient along the y direction of the channel. Because of when you have a flow, flow inside the channel, the center flow speed will be much higher than the border. Right? On the border, the velocity is zero. In the center, you have a U maxima, right? So give it a strong shear. So the shear force will be the cutting uh, mechanism to cut off the droplets into smaller size. So the cutting force uh, from the formula here is proportional to the shear stress. The shear stress is proportional to the velocity gradient along y direction and times the viscosity of the fluids. So if you have a high, uh, vi vi high viscosity fluids, the cutting power will be higher. Okay? So the shear force times the area, uh, the area is the, 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 the drop of the area you want to cut. Okay? So you got the total force for the cutting. So after you balance the cutting force at some tension, uh, you can find out that the, 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 the length scale uh, is embedded inside some tension and also the shear force as well. Okay? So they give you some kind of a, you know, dimension. That will be the balance of the size of the smallest, uh, you, know, you know, the size. Uh, like I mentioned, the drop is size. You can generate by using this method. So this is exactly the example you can put here. Maybe you can write it down. <laughs> I always give you all the formula. <laughs> okay. So this one, I give an example like this. Hanging drop it. You, get, you have gravity, subtension, balance together. This one, you can consider swimming, okay? You swim inside swimming pool, okay? So in the, uh, or you, you, you drop, uh, you, you jump into a swimming pool, oh, okay? And uh, uh, the shear force of, of the uh, water uh, will hold your body without uh, falling down too fast. So anyhow, you will come down to uh, like a, uh, the final velocity, uh, the, the balance velocity. The term we call we call it terminal velocity. So, at the terminal velocity, if the terminal velocity is, is quite small, that means that you almost no movement. In that case, you have the uh, the, the surface uh, surface force balance with your body force. So this give you the intersection point here. So it's roughly between centimeter to millimeters uh, meter size. It depends on the uh, the physical phenomena you are using. So uh, these three intersection just uh, roughly give an idea about the differences. So they are not exactly at the meter, at the millimeter, at the microwave, no. <laughs> just give a rough idea, okay? So for example, for that example, if you're using water, you can find out the size is around five millimeter. But if you are using that water, using oil, the point will change. Okay, it will be different. Maybe you can hold a larger oil, because oil is lighter, okay, subtension is similar. So maybe you can find a different point. So it don't try to mi misunderstand, it's the only fixed point you know. <laughs> it's a roughly at the that area, just give you an idea. And also in the micrometer size, use this one, you can take the something uh, in this region. Yeah, just give you a rough idea. So which one is important in which scale? So that will uh, allow you to change your intuition, switch your mode, different uh, thinking mode, from macro scale, micro scale, even into the nano scale. Okay? Okay, if there is no further problem, now we go to the next uh, topic. Okay, so uh, now we understand different scales, uh, uh, body force, line force, uh, surface force, they behave differently at different scale. So, so now we look uh, into the locomotion. 
Okay, the commotion that means uh, uh, animal or uh, insects they try to use different kind of uh, force to move themselves. Okay, either by using walking, by using swimming, by using flying different way. Okay, so no matter what kind of things are, uh, uh, what kind of driving force you use, uh, actually uh, you will encounter several physical phenomena. The first one is the uh, Reynolds number. Okay. The Reynolds number is coming from Navier's law equation. Uh, in, in the Navier's law equation, uh, there will be two important terms. One is inertial term. The other one is a viscous term. Okay, so when we balance these two terms together, so we using the inertial force term to divide it by the viscous force term. So we in out, we'll have this kind of formula. The formula tell us about uh, if we have a large uh, Reynolds number, that means our inertial force is much larger than the viscous force. Okay, so in this case, the system will become more violent, has more freedom, or we call it turbulent. Turbulent is easier to understand. <laughs> okay, however, uh, the, however, if we have a small Reynolds number, that means that our viscous force is larger than the inertial force. Remember, viscous force is kind of friction force. The purpose for friction force is try to uh, get rid of your energy, to dispel your energy, to take out your energy, or to reduce your energy you generated. So that means uh, viscous force will have the ability to calm down your system, make it more peaceful, okay? Calm down the system, not so turbulent. So in small Reynolds number, the system becomes laminar flow. Laminar flow means uh, the flow uh, flow more regularly, more uniformly, more smoothly, without a lot of eddies, uh, vibrations, uh, uh, turbulence, those kind of things. Okay. Okay, and uh, uh, when we um, Consider uh, the parameters inside. Uh, there are uh, several parameters regarding the inertia force. Uh, they are like a uh, density, velocity, and length scale on the top, and only viscosity on the bottom. So the, visco uh, the, the viscosity represents the viscous force. On the top, we have a uh, density. It's called a relative body. Uh, at the bottom, uh, but, uh, sorry, velocity, and also the length. Okay. And for the velocity, uh, we can use in uh, the formula velocity proportional to the length over uh, time. And the time equal to this one, uh, you can use in the, the Newton's second law and to develop these kind of things uh, later. Okay, so the time equal to uh, square root of the length scale. Uh, so that means uh, the velocity will proportional to the length, uh, cubic, uh, length uh, square. Okay, square root, okay. So the Reynolds number will now become the uh, three two, okay three over two the length scale three over two. So uh, the Reynolds number for different uh, animals, from blue whale down to bacteria, they have a different uh, Reynolds number. So uh, if you want to trans uh, have transition from laminar flow into turbulence flow, usually uh, the Reynolds number uh, will be in the range. Uh, uh, from 10 to 3 up to 10 to 5. Uh, actually, we would remember the, the, the number 10 to 5. Okay, a bit easier to memorize. So be, uh, beyond 10 to 5, Reynolds number, you got turbulence flow. Below, you got a laminar flow. Okay, so for example, like a large fish, a uh, blue whale, uh, so the, the Reynolds number is pretty high. Or kind of a fleet, uh, ship, a large ship, they usually have a larger um, Reynolds number. So that's why when they are swimming in, in the water, you see a lot of eddies, a lot of turbulence things are surrounding okay, uh, their body. They also give a lot of friction. And uh, uh, for s uh, larger birds, uh, uh, it will be in the range as well. Okay, But for insects, uh, insects, they, they, they are small. So their Reynolds number usually is more than, than 100 or even uh, for bacteria, it's only Reynolds number 10 to minus 6. Okay, it's pretty small. So for those uh, insects or bacteria, they are within the uh, laminar flow region. 
they never encounter turbulence flow. So that means um, the viscose force is very important to them. So every time when they fly or when they um, swim, the distance will become very, very short because the inertial force will be dispersed away easily by the viscous force in short distance. Okay, so the, I, I just mentioned, so that's why they need to either swim or fly uh, repeatedly. They cannot stop. They become very, very busy, like bees. They are very busy. You never see them like a, a glide, like an eagle. I'll never see bees glide, okay. Uh, that's a problem. <laughs> Okay, so when you draw uh, those things uh, onto uh, uh, a figure here, so you can find out the figure exactly follow uh, the rules we just uh, mentioned here. It's a radius number uh, equal to the L uh, three, two, three over two. Okay, this kind of power. Okay. So uh, for low, uh, so in micro scale or even in nano scale, so we you can find out the radius number is very very low. So it's very difficult to generate turbulence. Okay. We have several phenomena associated with this. The first one, uh, if you do, are doing swimming, swimming or flying, the stopping distance will be very, very short because of the dissipation of viscous force we just mentioned. Okay. So, so no gliding for micro objects. Okay. Uh, so, um, uh, so we can compare the burst fly or insect fly. Okay. And also, another important phenomenon is called a re re uh, reversibility. Reversibility means uh, uh, if you uh, do the same action repeatedly, you go back and forth, uh, and out, you will, have an, uh, you, will, you, will, you will not have any movement. For example, if you swing inside a pool of a, a honey, okay. so if you uh, swing um, your your, 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 your arm, one side, your body will go forward, right? But when you reverse your, your, your hand at the same pose, same direction, and also same length, you will come back to the original path without any movement. Okay, that's because the domination force is, is a viscous force, surface force, uh, surface force, viscous force. So using vi same viscous force, one side, same viscous force, the other side, you end up get the same movement. N no forward movement. So in small scale, the swimming is no gliding, and the start distance is very short, and the also is, uh, is reverse reversible. For example, you want to mix with two honey together. Uh, one honey with a green color, the other one is a, with a red color. You want to mix them together. Okay, uh, you disturb them in one direction for hundred. Uh, rotation, then you cover the hundred rotation. You find out you will recover back to the original uh, position without any mixing. So another problem is that the mixing become very very difficult because there is no no turbulence. It's laminar flow. Laminar flow means that uh, everybody follow the rules very very well. They don't change it. They don't break the rules. They follow the the path very very well. So when you using the same path coming back, they will be recovered back. To into the original structure and the position. Understand? That's a problem. <laughs> so in micro scale, another phenomena, not only the stop is short, the other phenomena is uh, the mixing become very, very terrible. Very, very difficult for mixing. Because no turbulence, no rule breaking. Everybody follow the same path. That's a name of phenomena. Okay. But also it's a good thing. Sometimes if you don't have mixing, you don't need you don't need to uh, to fabricate a uh, channel wall. You put two uh, fruit together, they will not mix with each other for long distance. So you can deliver them for long distance. You still can separate them easily. That's another benefit. <laughs> if there is no good mix mixing <laughs> phenomena, so it depends on how you use them. Okay. <laughs> If you face them, encounter them, change them, there will be problem. But if you use them, maybe it's a good phenomena. Somebody used this phenomena to generate a spatial way to do um, uh, separation. Yeah, we will talk about this later. Okay. Yeah, in different topic.